Listen. Do you hear the sounds of morning? sounds all around us, everywhere we go, all through the day. Turn off the TV now, it's time for breakfast. A lot of times, when we're thinking of something else, we don't really listen to every sound. But they're still there. wonder how sounds are made or why they are different from each other. <laughs> to make a sound, something has to vibrate or wiggle back and forth, but it won't start to vibrate by itself. First you have to pluck it or hit it. Rub something over it. Or blow across it. Your voice works the same way. Air from your lungs makes your vocal cords vibrate. If you touch your throat lightly, you can actually feel the vibrations of your vocal cords. But why do we hear the vibrations too? To understand, let's follow what happens when we pluck a guitar string. The air around the string is made up of molecules. As the string moves back and forth, it pushes against the molecules that are in its way crowding them together and pushing them against the molecules next to them. And those molecules push against the next ones. The push and pull of the string makes sound waves that travel through the air, very much like ripples on a pond. When these waves reach our ear, they make tiny bones in the ear start to vibrate, and we hear sound. Sound waves can travel through other materials too, not just through the air. For instance, they can travel through metal or wood. They can travel underwater. They can even travel through a string. Sector 4, this is Sector 5. Come in. This is Sector 4. Go ahead. The way something sounds depends on how it vibrates. Some of the sounds we hear are soft. Others are much louder. The softness or loudness of a sound is called volume. If we pluck our guitar string softly, it will push the air molecules gently and make a soft sound. If we pluck it harder, it will crowd the molecules closer together and make a loud sound. 
Another difference in sounds is whether they are high or low. The highness or lowness of a sound is called pitch. Things that vibrate very fast, thousands of times a second, make high-pitched sounds. Things that vibrate more slowly, only a hundred times a second or so, make low-pitched sounds. If a sound has a definite pitch, we call it a musical sound. If it doesn't have a clear, definite pitch, we call it noise. Now suppose we want to make music. For that we need many different pitches, high and low. Some instruments, such as a piano or harp, have many strings, each tuned to a different pitch. Short, thin strings vibrate rapidly and have high pitches. Long, thick strings vibrate more slowly and have low pitches. On other instruments, you can change the pitch of a string, making it shorter or longer, by moving your fingers. But what about an instrument you blow through? How do you think its pitch has changed? Pressing the keys shortens or lengthens the column of air inside the instrument. To see how this works, we need a bottle. The bottle isn't really empty. It has a column of air inside. Suppose we shorten the column of air by putting some water in the bottle. With a shorter column of air, just as with a shorter string, the pitch is higher. how we vary the pitch of our voices? Special muscles change the length and thickness of our vocal cords to produce sounds of different pitch. Then we use our lips, tongue, and teeth to help shape those sounds into words and songs. So now when we hear the world around us, we know that sounds are made when something vibrates and that how it vibrates determines the kind of sound it will make. Soft or loud. High or low. Music or noise. Are you listening?